Praise be Jesus Christ, now and forever. Who we are, the second Sunday of ordinary time, and the church has pr provided us readings that are anything but ordinary. Indeed, they are most extraordinary. They are filled with so much for our reflection and for our meditation. We could certainly spend many hours and days upon them. When we look at the first reading, the prophet Isaiah, Isaiah is speaking words of encouragement. He is announcing that the Lord, who's, who is the God of Israel, has chosen once again to bring his people back to their native land, to the land of promise that he had given to them. They had turned away from the Lord and their enemies had overtaken them. They had gone into exile, but now a time of vindication was upon them. They were no longer to be forsaken or desolate, but now they were called by God, my delight, and their land espoused. The Lord takes delight in his people, Isaiah says. Imagine that the God of the universe, of heaven and earth, takes delight not just in Israel, but in you and I. We are his chosen ones. We are the ones that he has called to himself through baptism and confirmation. He has given us the gifts of life, spiritual life, a participation in divine life. We are espoused by God. We are his delight. He delights in us. In our second reading, St. Paul puts some of this into practicality because of the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit has been poured out upon us. And we, are, we have become temples of the Holy Spirit. And so the Spirit pours forth his gifts within us, gifts of all kinds as Paul has identified here. Why? For the building up of the kingdom of God, for the building up of the mystical body of Christ, each and every one of us has a participation in the work of redemption and salvation that the Lord has won for us by his death and resurrection because this work is ongoing. The Lord wants the kingdom of God to be made manifest through us, through the power of the Spirit within us, through the gifts which the Spirit gives to us. The harmonious working of all those gifts brings forth the revelation of God who has redeemed the world. And that brings us to our gospel passage today. We all know it, the wedding feast of Cana. This is St. John gives to us as the first of the signs, the first of the miracles, the first of the epiphanies, we might say, of Jesus as savior and redeemer. And here they have one, one run out of wine. And because of that, there's a kind of a social faux pas that is here. The wine is a symbol of the joy and the rejoicing and the delight that it takes place, the celebration of a wedding. But it's not just on a practical level, on a human level. St. John always has a deeper spiritual level because the mother of Jesus, who pleads on their behalf that they have no more wine, intercedes for them, is interceding for all of us. For the wine that Jesus produces, the wine that Jesus gives, is life the life of God himself. It is the divine life that the wine symbolizes and that is given to us. And so Mary here is pleading on behalf of all of us, of all of humanity, that we are without the life of God and we need God desperately. And so we see the miracle that Jesus produces, a miracle that goes far beyond the needs of the people. And that is what the kingdom is all about. God's gifts are overwhelming. They're in abundance, an overabundance, because he is God and he loves us with such deep affection and deep delight. But out of all of the things that we can be pondering upon this weekend and this coming week upon these readings, I ask you to look at one specific word, one specific sentence spoken by Mary, the mother of Jesus, the mother of the church, our mother. And that is the words that she spoke to the servants. Do whatever he tells you. May we always do whatever Jesus tells us.